Tonight's lesson is on identifying proportional and non-proportional relationships in graphs. My hope is that by the end of tonight's lesson, if you take a look at a graph, you're going to be able to state whether the quantities that are shown in the graph are proportional or not. Let's do a quick review of graphing in the first quadrant. I just want to remind you of where the origin is. The origin is where our x-axis, our horizontal axis, and our y-axis, our vertical axis, meet. The origin is the point zero, zero. Our x-axis, we normally label it with an x, is our independent variable. And on our y-axis, we have our dependent variable. y always depends on the x. In the first quadrant, there's your point zero, zero. To graph in the first quadrant, if we want to graph 1, 4, we go 1 to the right, 4 up. So this point right here is 1, 4. The point 4, 1 is a very different point. This is the point here, 4, 1. And that would be 4 to the right, 1 up. So in your first quadrant, the first coordinate tells you to move to the right from the origin. And the second coordinate tells you how far to move up. Quick review of graphing in the first quadrant. Let's talk about renting movies. Maybe you went to the red box to rent a movie. It says the table below shows the relationship between the cost of renting a movie to the number of days it has been rented. Is the cost proportional to the number of days the movie has been rented? Show or explain your work. We've been working on this for a few days now. You go ahead and try to tell me whether or not these quantities are proportional to one another. Pause the video and then come on back. All right, hopefully you paused the video. Let's take a look to see if these quantities are proportional. Well, we know if these quantities are going to be proportional, we must be able to find some constant so that when we multiply our number of days by that constant, we get the corresponding cost. Six times what is two? Well, that might not be easy for some of you to come up with. So you might want to use our strategy to take our dependent variable, our second quantity, divide by our independent variable, our first quantity. And in this case, we could take two $2 divided by 6 days, the corresponding number of days. 2 divided by 6 on our calculators would give us a value of 0.3 repeating. You can use that value every time. However, there's some limitations on the calculator. So if you do 9 times 0.3 repeating, you might find that you get 2.9999999 actually 9 times 0.3 repeating is 3. So I prefer to leave it in fraction form. So I'm just going to go ahead and write this fraction in simplest form. 2 divided by 2, 6 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3. That means it will cost a dollar for every three days you rent the video. So let's go ahead and try to multiply each of these by one third. If one-third works every single time, then we know that we have a proportional relationship. Six times one-third. Well, six is the same as six over one. Multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. When we're multiplying fractions, six times one is six. One times three is three. Fraction bar there means to divide. Six divided by three is two. It works for that one. So then you try nine times one-third. Nine is the same as nine over one. We multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Nine times one is nine. One times three is three. Fraction bar means to divide. Nine divided by three is three. It's looking good so far. 24 times one-third. 24 over one times one-third. Straight across the top, straight across the bottom. 24 times one is 24. One times three is three. Fraction bar means to divide. 24 divided by three is totally eight. This is looking good to be proportional. Try the last one. 3 over 1 times 1 third. We'll multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. This is totally a proportional relationship. Because when we take our number of days, and we multiply by one-third, we're able to get the corresponding cost. Therefore, it is proportional. What I'd like you to do now is try to take this same scenario, and I'd like you to now graph the data from the table on the axis shown below. I want to let you, just a quick reminder, 
This is our x-axis, our independent. This is our y-axis, our dependent variable. Also, I just don't even want you to worry about trying to graph 24 comma 8. For now, I'd like you to just graph the other three because go ahead and go by one unit. One, two, three, four, five. On each axis, please feel comfortable going by one unit. One, two, three, four, five. Take a minute, pause the video, graph those points, and then we'll come back and discuss what this graph looks like and whether or not we know that this is proportional. Hopefully you pause the video. So to graph our points, we always graph x comma y. So in this case, we're going to graph 6 comma 2, 9 comma 3, 3 comma 1. We went ahead and went by one unit each time, so that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's 10. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's 10. I want to finish labeling my axes. This is our number of days. Number of days is independent. And the cost is our dependent. Cost depends on how many days you rent that video for. Okay, let's go ahead and plot 6, 2, plot 9, 3, and plot 3, 1. And the question would be, is this a graph of a proportional relationship? Well, the answer is going to be yes, because the table was proportional. Therefore, the graph must be proportional. I'd like you to take a look at this graph, though. We could use a straight edge and draw a beautiful straight line through those three points that we've plotted. And again, if we continued that straight line on, we'd eventually get to 24, 8, and it would line up beautifully with the rest of our points. I want you to notice that this graph is actually a beautiful straight line, and it goes through the origin. It actually goes through the point 0, 0. So not only do we know that this information, these quantities are proportional because when we evaluated the table and we analyzed the table, we saw it was proportional. But if you were given a graph, if it's a beautiful straight line that then goes through the origin when you connect up the points you plot, you know it's definitely a proportional relationship. I'd like you to look at another example. It's about selling some candy. Isaiah sold candy bars to help raise money for his scouting troop. The table shows the amount of candy he sold to the money he received. Is the amount of candy bars he sold proportional to the money Isaiah received? How do you know? So pause the video, try it out, come on back. Okay, hopefully you pause the video. We know that for a table of values to show a proportional relationship, we must be able to find some constant to multiply each of our original number of candy bars sold by to get the corresponding money received. I'm going to just do this very quickly. I'm going to look at the 12. 12 times what is 12? Well, that's a pretty easy one to come up with. 12 times 1 is 12. So if this is a proportional relationship, we should be able to multiply by 1 each time. Well, what is 8 times 1? 8 times 1 is 8. That's certainly not 9. As soon as we're unable to come up with a single constant to multiply each of our first quantity by to get the second quantity, we know that it's not proportional. And hopefully you're, be you're becoming very comfortable with that. And the reason it's not proportional is because we can't take our number of candy bars. There's actually no constant that when we multiply by that constant, the number of candy bars gets you your money received. So because there is no constant that will work every single time, this is not a proportional relationship. Therefore, when you graph the data, this is not going to show a proportional graph. So I need for you to take a moment, try to graph this information. Again, remember, our x-axis represents our independent variable. That's our number of bars sold. And our y-axis represents our dependent variable, the money received. Depends on how many bars you sell. Again, you can go by one unit every time. So take a minute, try that out, and then come on back. So pause the video. All right, hopefully you pause that video. 
we're going to just go by one unit every time. One, two, three, four. There's our five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's our ten. One, two, three, four. There's our five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's our ten. What we're going to do again, we're going to plot our points, x comma y always. So we're going to plot 2 comma 3, 4 comma 5, 8 comma 9, 12 comma 12. All right, 2 comma 3, 2 to the right, then 3 up. 4 comma 5 would be 4 to the right, and then 5 up. Next one would be 8 comma 9, so we'll go 8 to the right, and we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 up. And the last point we want to plot is 12 comma 12, and that point will actually be right there. You might be looking at this and you might say, well, this almost looks like it's a straight line. We know it's not a proportional relationship because the table wasn't proportional. So is the data proportional? No, not proportional. What I'd like you to do is try to see if any of the points line up. So if I take a look at those points and I try to use a straight edge to connect them, I'm going to see I cannot connect all four points using a straight edge. I might be able to connect three out of the four points, but not all four points using a straight edge. You'll also notice that this graph does not go through the origin. And we talked a moment ago when we saw our graph that was of a proportional relationship. It was a straight line through the origin. Well, this one's not a straight line. You can't connect a straight line through all four points and it doesn't go through the origin. So this is definitely not a proportional relationship. For tonight's focus question, I'd like you to do a nice write-up on telling how you can tell if a graph shows a proportional relationship between two quantities. Write it up. Be ready to share tomorrow in class. Have a good night.